Okay, here we go with uh, inverse functions, chapter 5, section 3. This is good stuff here, good stuff. Okay, a little bit of a review from the last stuff here. So if we want to talk about uh, finding the fog and the goff, remember, this means we're going to take the g function and put it into the f function. Take the g function put it into the f function, which gives you 3 times 2x squared minus 1 plus 2. Looks like 6x squared minus 3 plus 2. 6x squared minus 1. Hopefully we got that guy right there. Uh, the next one, oh, spoiler alert, the answer is B. Remember, this would mean we would take we would take the, what happened here? We would, what happened here? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Spoiler alert, huh? We're going to put the F function into the G function. F function into the G function. 2, 3x plus 2 squared minus 1. Square the first term. 9x squared. Multiply them together and double it. 12x plus 4 minus 1. Distribute the 2. 18x squared plus 24x plus 8 minus 1. That's where we get our 18x squared plus 24x plus 7. The 8 minus 1 is the plus 7. Uh, we got another one here. It wants g of f of x. So really we're going to take our f function. We're going to take our f, f function and we're going to put it into the we're going to put it into the g. 0.75 times x plus 20. Distribute, distribute. I think we get A. Inverse relations. Two relations are um, inverse relations if and only if whenever one relation contains the element AB, the other relationship contains BA. So if you're going to be a relation, remember that's simply a set of ordered pairs. So when it's just a set of ordered pairs, pretty simple. We're going to just take our 1, 5 and flip it around. 2, 6, 6, 2, 3, 7, 7, 3. Just invert them. All you're doing is flipping them around. Next, if we're going to talk about the coordinates and find the inverse, um, the graph, for, so I could do 1, 3. 1, 3, going to be there. 6, 3. Uh, 6, 0. And 1, 0. Okay, we got a rectangle, right? Rectangle, pretty easy, yeah. Now, when we, when we talk about When we talk about, how do I change this pen color? There we go. Talk about flipping them around. A 1, 3 turns into a 3, 1. The 6, 3 turns into a 3, 6. The 6, 0 is 0, 6. And then we get a 0, 1. So I go 3, 1. And then I go 3, 6. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then zero, six, zero, one. So you can really see they've got some, there's some similarities here where when we're in interchanging the X and the Ys, when we interchange the Xs and Ys, we want to think about it in terms of right here the line y equals x that's where they're equal to one another right 
So we interchange those. So the, like for example, the 1, 3 became 3, 1. It's actually a reflection over that line. That's going to be a key piece. Good stuff here. Good stuff. If f and f inverse are inverses of one another, then all of the x coordinates change with the y coordinates. Okay, so this is going to be our how we're going to denote that f inverse. All right, f inverse. We don't read that as one over; it's read as f inverse. find the inverse. So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is write y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. So the first step is to change the f of x to y. Okay, and then we interchange the x's and y's because that's what we did when it was just a set of ordered pairs. The x, y's when we inverted became y, x. We interchange them. So now we go x equals negative 1 half y plus 1. So we just changed every single ordered pair. Now it's natural for us to <coughs> solve for y. x minus 1 equals negative 1 half y. Now I can multiply by the reciprocal, negative 2. Watch your dis distributing. Negative 2x plus 2 equals y. And then the last thing you do, the last thing you do is write f inverse of x equals negative 2x plus 2. When we look at this on the graph now, if I graph the original, I get a y-intercept of 1, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, down 1, right 2, up 1, left 2. So there's that original equation. Uh, do the best I can here with a straight line. And now when I graph this other one, when I graph the other one, I go up to 2, and then I have a slope of negative 2, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. So now it's going to look like this. Okay, and that's where we're going to have some symmetry here. I just talked about how that symmetry is going to occur through this line y equals x. These are reflected over here, these are reflected over here, and vice versa. Since they're interchangeable, you'll always have a point that'll be on the, on the line y equals x. Oh, look at that. Look at this beautiful graph. This one looks even better than the one that I did. There's the two graphs. Here's the line that it's being reflected over, the line y equals x, because that's where the y's are equal to the x's. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so your steps here, your steps are going to be, are going to be, change the f of x to a y. Got to get rid of the yellow, that's for sure. Yellow's awful. Let's go blue. Now we interchange the x's and the y's. Now we solve back for my new y times 3 times 3. 3x minus 18 equals y. Please don't forget the last step is changing it into f inverse, f inverse, and there we have it. All right. Oh, no, I wrote right over the top of that thing. That's okay. You can see the two graphs, and you can see that there, the symmetry occurs on dy equals. Oh, I could erase some stuff there. Oh, it just erased it for me. Good stuff. Two functions, f and g, are inverses. If when you take the composition of functions, uh, they simplify to x, okay? They simplify to x. So these are going to be the keys now. So showing using composite, you'll be asked to show that things are, 
our inverses by using the composite. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take and we're going to find the fog. And the fog is when the g function goes into the f function. 3 fourths times 4 thirds x plus. You'll see inverses undo each other. Okay, They undo each other. So what I'll get here, but we have to get x. We have to get x. 3 fourths times 4 thirds x is x and 3 fourths times this is plus 6 minus 6 plus 6 minus 6 is x. So the fog equals x. That's a good thing. We do need to check the Goff, so we'll go the other way. We'll put this one, we'll put that one over to, we'll put this one into there. So now it's going to be the Goff will be equal to uh, 4 thirds times 3 fourths x minus 6 plus 8 x minus 8 plus 8. I get x. So that's showing that they're inverses by using the composites. The fog and the goth equals x. You have proven that they are inverses of one another. Same thing here. I'll do the fog first. And I get 3 times x minus 1 over 3 plus 1. Well, that's equal to x minus 1 plus 1, which is x. The fog is equal to x. Then we do the goff. We do the goff, and we get, now I'm putting the f in 3x plus 1 minus 1, all divided by 3. Watch your order of operations. 3x over 3 is x. If the fog and the goff are both equal to x, then yes, they are inverses. The horizontal line test, remember, we used to run the vertical line test. Um, so if you take a look at this, if you talk about is something a function, excuse me, is something a function, we're going to run a if you remember back to the vertical line test, so if I have a parabola, that yes, it's a function, yes. But now if I invert all the x's and y's, for example, this one, if I found the, if I found the inverse of that, it might look like, oh, I think it would look like, uh, might look like this, right? And is that a function? No, the vertical line test says no, not a function. So instead of actually graphing it, we can actually say this original function, yes, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a function. But now when I run the horizontal line test, I can see, I, I can see that I, whether or not my inverse will be a function because what it's going to do is it's just going to turn it sideways. So since no horizontal line can be drawn so that it passes through more than one point, the inverse is also a function. Now over here, this original one, whoops, those aren't really vertical. When I run verticals here, yes, the original is a function. But now when you run a horizontal, a horizontal can be drawn that passes through more than one point. That means the inverse is not a function, okay? So you can do that just by looking at a graph. So if you were going to graph this one, if you remember back to how we, whoa, 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 how we graph, this would be a parabola that is two to the right and one up. There's my vertex. I'll sketch a graph. I'll get something that looks like this find the inverse of it, then graph the function and its inverse. So I've graphed the function. I can already tell that the original is a function, and the horizontal line test will tell me that the new one will not be a function. And what is this going to look like? So the first thing I'm going to do, change it into a y, and then I am going to interchange the x's and y's, and now I'm going to solve back for the new y and we got to remember when I take the square root it's set free set me free and I have a plus and minus x minus 1 look at that add 2 add 2 don't forget 
f inverse equals plus or minus the square root of x minus 1 plus 2. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do a <clears throat> 1 to the right and up 2. That will be where my vertex or the end of my my square root which will look like this but that's the positive I also need the negative okay so the red one is the original graph the blue one is the inverse and as you can see the blue one is not a function and we can tell that by running the horizontal line test right away can also see that we would be a reflection over the line y equals x. Everything is interchanged here in terms of, you can see the vertex right here, this one and this one. They're opposites of one another. This point and this point, they're opposites of one another. So you can tell a lot about the inverse just by looking at the original function. Same thing here, change this into a y. First you need y. Now you're going to interchange. Now you're going to solve for y. Now you're going to take the square root. Don't forget plus or minus. x plus 3. Now you're going to write it as f inverse of x is plus or minus the square root of x plus 3. Uh, if I was in a graph, the original, I'd be down 3. And then I would have a parabola. And then, uh, let's see, we want to be like this. Good stuff, good stuff. And now if I wanted to graph that, that, this one, that's 3 to the left. And now it goes like this, and like this. And those are going to, again, you're going to see the original is a function, and then you that's it. There's a worksheet for some homework. Remember, after you solve for your inverse, you've got to show that it's equal to f inverse.